Hello, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how we can take our Unity game and record a buffer of PNG images which we can then take to a website such as easygift.com or you know use Photoshop or Premiere Pro. We can put those images in as a sequence, we can get an animated GIF out of it which we can then use on say Twitter for example to help market our games. So to just walk through a little bit more of what's going on here, so I can press um, R on the keyboard and I've now started a buffer recording of uh, frames. And those frames are capturing the last five seconds of my gameplay. So as I'm walking around, I can suck up these uh, slimes and you can see that this is a little Slime Rancher clone test project. So I can walk around and I can inhale these slimes and I can fire them back out. And then I can hit G on the keyboard, just make sure I actually hit G then. And that'll copy the directory to my clipboard. So if I go over to uh, File Explorer, and I hit paste, and you can see that it's um, made a folder and it's stored all of these images into that folder. So I can open this, and if I just hold right on the keyboard, you can see that as we go through these frames, it's recorded that last five seconds up until I pressed G. It's worth noting that this is very much a work in progress kind of script, but I just wanted to share it with you all. It'd be great if you do notice anything that can be improved to let me know in the comments below. But let's just jump into Unity and see how I've got this all working. Okay, so here I am inside Unity. Uh, just to know, I'm using Unity 2022 beta. Um, I just wanted to test it, so that's why kind of the uh, UI looks slightly different, but it's not a big deal. This this will work on earlier versions of Unity as well. And you can see in the scene that I've got quite a lot of slimes bouncing around. And if we just hit play, and if I go up to my camera where my script is, so you can see at the moment um, the recorder isn't running, and we're getting a frame rate of uh, 120 FPS sort of on average. This would hardly... At this is with no optimizations for the slimes. They're all bouncing around with rigid bodies. And I can, you know, hoover them up and fire them out. Now, if I press R, you see over the right hand side here, when I press R, the recorder will start running. So now that's recording the gameplay. And you can see over here, I've got FPS. So I'm taking 24 frames every second. And I'm doing that for five seconds. And that's giving me a queue of 120 frames. So it's buffering. Uh, 120 frames worth of gameplay at this size and this uh, frame rate. And you can see that the FPS has dropped kind of by about 20 frames a second. You know, there's probably more performant ways you could do this. And then as we're running along, so now the recorder's running, it's going to have the last five seconds of gameplay in memory, and then I can hit G. You see that it hitches slightly, a bit of delay as that recorded. Um, but now if I go back over to my file browser, I can paste in this new folder and all of my frames are here from within the game. So you see, this was the gameplay that I just recorded. And every time we hit record, it'll save it into a new folder with that date and time as well. So we can have multiple stores. It's not overwriting the previous uh, images. You can see that we've got all of the old ones here. So, okay, so that's enough of the demonstration. Let's just jump into the code and see how it's working. So if I go over into the GIF maker script, you can see here that we've got a public uh, uint, which is the width and height. We've got a public bool to use the screen size, which just sets it to the screen width and height if that's checked in the on validate function. Um, I don't recommend using this though. Uh, recording a 1920 by 1080 frame tanks the frame rate. And six to, and obviously it would make your GIF a lot bigger as well. So this resolution of 640 by 320 seems to be quite a nice sweet spot. Um, we've got the FPS, which I've just defaulted to one and seconds defaulted to one as well. And we can even put uh, a min on this as well. So we don't go below in the inspector. Then we've got a public in queue count, which is just so we can see that, see how many frames are in the queue. That was just for debugging. And then we've got our bool, which just shows us if the recorder is actively running. Then we've got a private in, which is the amount of frames. This is gonna return our FPS times by the second. So, so for example, 24 frames for five seconds gives us 120 frames. So that'll be 120. And I was comparing that with the queue count to make sure that it was running properly. And then we've got the frame interval as well. And this controls how often we should be recording a frame. So again, if I take um, one and I divide that by 24, so every 0.04 seconds, I need to add the, f the current frame to the buffer. 
to get the playback to be actually five seconds at the end. And then we just need to keep track of the current time as well to make sure that this is all running. So this is kind of like a little timer system. And then we've got a private queue of Texture2D, which is our frame queue. We've got a uh, coroutine called Recorder. This is just stored in a reference. We can stop the recording. And then we've got a reference to our camera and we're making a render texture as well. So in the start function, I'm gonna get our frame queue and make a new queue um, that is the right amount of frames. I'm going to make a new render texture with the width and height that I've put in. And 24-bit depth seems to work well. And with cam, I'm just caching the camera main. And then I was debugging .log in the frame interval, which is this here, uh, just to make sure that was working. I can get rid of that. I know it works. So now this is using uh, the Unity Engine's new input system. So here, I'm just saying, uh, if the G key was pressed this frame and the recorder is running, then save the PNGs. And then I've got the um, R key, and this is just gonna um, toggle whether the recorder is running or not, and it's gonna reset our current timer. If the recorder has stopped running, then we'll stop the recorder coroutine, or else we'll reset the frame queue and start the recorder going as well. This is necessary so we don't start mid queue and start to add the new recording to the old one. And this one is obviously just, if the recorder's running, um, cap, increase the current time so we can um, check that here. The main frame here, this is the, what's actually recording the buffer. So I've got um, an IE enumerator coroutine called record frame buffer. And I've just got a debug.log just so I know that it started recording the frame. And this is gonna loop. So it's gonna say while true, so it's gonna be constantly looping. If our current time is greater than the frame interval, we're going to reset the current time and then we're going to capture the frame and then at the end of the while loop we'll yield return null so we don't um, have a crash so we'll just wait for the next frame so this bit of code i um, got this kind of from i got this from this topic on the unity forum because the way i was doing this originally is i was just writing direct directly to the texture 2d but with that you have to provide a rect size and it has to be the screen width and height otherwise you get it kind of crops into the frame and this was kind of the easiest and kind of slightly more efficient way of, of taking a screenshot of the whole screen, but having it be a smaller resolution. So what we do is we set the camera's target texture to our render texture, which again, we have made up here and we've cached that. But the camera's target texture is the um, RT. We make a new texture 2D um, called screenshot. And this is set to the same size as our render texture. Then we call render on the camera. Then we set the currently active render texture to the render texture that we've made. We call read pixels on our screenshot and then we null out our camera's target texture and set the render texture active to null. So this was the code that I got from this uh, link and it works really well. If you think this could be optimized a bit more, let me know in the comments below. Um, but the next thing after that is this is the bit that's gonna be controlling the actual frame queue and keeping the buffer of screenshots in memory so we can save them out when we need to. So we say that if the frame queue dot count is greater than the current amount of frames, then we need to dequeue the screenshot from the frame queue so it makes room to then on queue the current screenshot that we've just took. And just as a bit of a visual example of that, of what I mean, so say this was 120 frames, we need to make room for another frame to come in. So we have to pop out the last one in there and queues are first in, first out. So the first shot, that went in will be the first one to come out when we dequeue it. So it'll always kind of be moving through almost like a conveyor belt. Um, so the screenshots will be moving along and when a new screenshot comes on, we have to kick out the last one. So hopefully that makes sense. There are extension methods you can make that do this. You can have like managed queues and stuff, but this works kind of fine for me. So once we dequeue screenshot, we can on queue the next one. And then here I was just setting the queue count to the frame queue dot count. And this is just so I can see in the inspector how many frames are actually in the queue. So this isn't necessary. This was just so I could actually see it in the inspector. It was more for debug purposes. So once that's running, it'll keep that buffer of screenshots. And then I can press G on the keyboard and that will save our PNG. So let's have a look at what that uh, functions doing. But this is an async function just so we can await for all of the um, screenshots to be saved out. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stop our coroutine which is our recorder and you'll see that up in our update function when I start the um, coroutine I'll get a reference to it just so I can stop it a bit easier. I'm going to make a new task array which is set to the size of our frame cues dot count. And I cache the date and time and this is so I can make this string here called uh, dir or directory 
And this is set to the application.persistentDataPath, which as that says there, it contains the path to a persistent data directory. In the case of Windows, that's your app data, local, low, and then your company name and then project name, which is set up within Unity. So by default, it'll be set to default company, and then it'll be whatever you've named your project to. So here I've made, this is the Slime Rancher project that I was working on, and then it appends to that. And then the day, separated by a dash, and then it's got the month, year, and then underscore hours, minutes, time, seconds. So you can see how that works here. So we've got the, the date and the time that it was taken. And this makes that directory so we can enter it and save our screenshots into it. So we've got that string, and then I'm gonna copy that string to our clipboard. So it makes it easier for me to just paste that in. Because if you don't do that, what you have to do is you have to go to run, type in app data like that, and then go back out and then local low and then default company. It was getting a bit of a pain. So now I can just paste that straight into file explorer. And then here I'm gonna cache the actual size of our frame queue into an int called count. And the reason for that is as you start to dequeue the frames, the count shrinks. So if you say I is less than the frame queue dot count, it ends up stopping part way through. Because as I increases, the count decreases and then you kind of meet halfway. So instead of 120 frames, you'd actually only output 60. Another way of doing this is you could say i equals the frame queue dot count and then um, do i minus minus, but this works just fine. So I'm gonna get a reference to our texture and I'm gonna make a byte array called bytes and I'm just gonna encode the texture to uh, PNG. This method is part of the um, image conversion class, which is in the Unity engine namespace. So you should just have that automatically and you can call that and you can call that on texture 2 d So I'm gonna encode the PNG to a byte array, and then I'm gonna add a write file task to our tasks array. And then once that's done, I can await to make sure all of those tasks are kind of finished. And then I can start up the coroutine again, which just starts the record frame buffer going again until I manually turn it off with the R key. So all of this, all this write file task does is it just yields for a frame and then it writes it to file. And this was, and this might not be 100% necessary, but I just found for performance wise, instead of having a massive hitch where nothing happened, this just kind of give, this this just kind of gives this method uh, a bit of breathing room. There's probably a better way to do this. I'm not massively up yet completely on async stuff. I looked into kind of yielding until the directory had been written to, but it ended up being really convoluted. This works and it works better doing it this way than it did just writing the file in the loop. But again, your mileage may vary there. Hello, Dan from the future here. Um, something else you could do to improve this. So instead of waiting for all of the tasks to finish and having one big hitch, what you could do is you could actually slow this save PNGs down. So you could await the right file function and have um, a task delay at the end of the task as well. So we can write the file and then wait just 100 milliseconds and then write the next one. So it'll take longer to write all of the files, but even having a delay of 100 milliseconds allows you to carry on playing the game. So we just go back over into Unity and hit play. So you can see that as we walk along, I can press R to start that uh, frame buffer and we'll wait for the Q count to get up to 120 frames. So that's over 120. So I can hit G now and you notice there was no hitch at all. The frame rate does drop slightly, not massively. And then we can see that in the log, um, once that's done, it should say starting record frame buffer again. Um, so we'll just carry on going around and souping up the slimes, firing them out. So you can see that's done there now. So we've started the frame buffer again and that actually with that delay that only took 23 seconds uh, so instead of having one big hitch which we only had to wait 23 seconds and we got all of those files so if we go back over to our file explorer and we paste the new frame in you can see that all of our frames are still there they're still sequential it's still that frame buffer that's still it's still the uh, five seconds from when we hit G on the keyboard, but we managed to still go around and carry on playing. So if we were having this for a player to use, this would probably be the better way to do it. But let's go back to the video. For the actual writing of the file, first we wanna check whether the directory actually exists. And if it doesn't, we need to create it. And then we just call file.writeAllBytes. And, and this takes in the path of where you wanna write the bytes to, and then the actual byte array. So we've got our directory forward slash, and then, 
the name of the file. So here I'm calling it saved screen i.png. So that's going to come from this uh, loop here. And you can see that it's saved screen zero, saved screen one, saved screen two. And this allows them to be in the correct order. Uh, when you upload them or use them in a project, you can import them as an image sequence and they're all named sequentially. But yeah, I hope that all made sense and it was explained well. Like I said, this is kind of a work in progress. What I would really like to do is just have it saved directly as a GIF, but you can't do that natively in Unity. There's no encode to GIF. Uh, function unfortunately. There does seem to be some assets out there will, that will allow you to do that but what I like about this method is because it saves out the individual frames you can then you know tweak them edit them in Photoshop for example you could put the game's logo over the top of them and then save it as a gif. You can color balance them add sounds if you wanted to make a little movie so if I do eventually get uh, exporting directly from a gif to work, I would still have the ability to export as a PNG sequence because I feel like I have that ability to tweak it if necessary. But yeah, I hope that was useful. It's a very much a work in progress. It could massively be improved on, I'm sure. And I would love to hear in the comments uh, any suggestions on how to get this even more efficient. If you want to have a play around with this script, it's going to be available over on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Dampos. And it's linked in the description below as well. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.